Hey guys, welcome back to more AFK Arena. In today's video, we have two special guests on. We have Furry Hippo and we have Artie now. Furry Hippo on YouTube, Artie on Reddit. I'll leave links to all their stuff in the description. So make sure to go ahead and check them out over there. But we've got a discussion topic to go through today. And we just wanted to have a general chat about the state of the game. Um, we've got a few different topics. The main topics we're going to look at are heroes, quality of them, abilities of them, and frequency of them, um, events and things like that and then just other future things that we would like to see in the game if i remember i will leave timestamps to the different topics but hey who knows what happens anyway welcome uh furry hippo it's your first time on the channel arty you're gonna go second because you've been here before so glad to finally <laughs> have you on the channel dude um just give a quick introduction uh furry hippo gaming started years ago i've actually played games for my entire life so it's been just something that i've had a passion for um, really getting into the game, getting in depth into the mechanics of it, and then going into just really figuring it out and and getting just just getting into the game, just actually playing it for months and years and knowing the ins and outs of everything. Yeah, hundred percent. It's good. It's good. All right, we're back. We had some technical issues. I don't know what's going on. Getting a bit of reverb, but hopefully it doesn't affect too much. Uh, now, Artie, quick summary. We heard you from you probably last week, so. Make it short, dude. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Uh, I'm already. I do a lot of end game stuff, PvP, PVE, and I'm just. I'm an expert of my craft, but at the same time, I know nothing. <laughs> That's a fantastic contradiction. Okay, so into the topic. So the first one that I want to talk about is the new heroes in the game. Now, um, firstly, the first thing I want to talk about is how are you guys seeing the new heroes? Um, sort of the quality of them. What's your just general thoughts on the heroes that they've been putting out recently? We'll kick it off with you, Hippo. Um, the the quality doesn't seem really there. I mean, when you look at the light bear heroes we got, you look at a lot of the heroes have just been kind of walking over each other. I think that just goes into how fast they're putting them out. When you look at Walker, no one's going to use them. We used Respin when he was out for a very short time, then Raku kind of replaced him. It seems like they're just mass producing heroes instead of putting a lot more thought into them is what I'm feeling, especially from like a free to play perspective. There's no time to build the new heroes by the time you're building a hero or you have the hero built. There's already three or four heroes already released. So yeah. I, I think they definitely need to slow down a little bit with the heroes. Yep, and, and just extending on that, playing devil's advocate, because I never side with whoever's making an argument. I'm that annoying guy at a party who, no matter what your opinion is, I'm going to have the opposite. So do you see that, um, although I do agree with the frequencies pretty flat out, but with the heroes not being as good, do you see that as also possibly being a better thing so that we're not getting insane power creep? So at least not every new hero is... Or like completely straight replacing the one previously so that free to play aren't on an endless pursuit of that new hero. Like at least like, would you rather them all be the next thing that's really strong or would you rather them go the way they are? Like, I mean, Walker's an extreme case being the lone warrior who just absolutely sucks. Like you want some viability out of them, but I don't think we want every hero being like a new meta in itself. I don't think really the new meta, I think, just really the, I guess the synergy building off of other heroes that we have, you know, and they could have built heroes like Walker that have abilities to work with other light bearers or work with other rangers, you know, warrior classes. They, they could have built in a dynamic to kind of build synergy, especially within the light bearer faction itself, that I feel they, they don't do at all. Yeah. I don't want to see all the heroes meta because, again, we're just getting overrun with heroes and you're just replacing good heroes with good heroes, essentially. Yeah, definitely. And and in the case of Walker, I completely agree. He doesn't synergize with anything. He just he basically flops. Uh, Raku was a really nice one. I think Raku was the last one that I can think of of a really good example of a unit that I'd like to see more of the unit new units fit into. He's not completely game breaking, but he's a nice option if you do choose to build him. And he synergizes well with a lot of things that have any form of control. Um, the other one for me was Peggy. I still can't figure out Peggy. I don't know how to use her. She seems to have some sort of so she seems very viable in non-crafted formats. So yeah, Battle of Blood, um, Arena of Trials and stuff like that. She seems to really shine with her damage and stuff, but she doesn't seem to quite fit directly into any team that's making her 
dominant elsewhere. Kind of like the Isabella. Isabella is really nice and strong, but doesn't quite fit that optimal team position, um, but really good in those non-constructed formats. Thoughts? I think a lot of that just comes down to when you start seeing the um, level deficiencies. Yeah. So, so in, you know, battle of blood, things of that nature, you're on the exact same level. But as soon as you see the deficiencies, her guards will die in, in a split second. We see it with totems. We see it with ads. We see it with Baden. Um, they don't have the, the viability with, with their summoned abilities, which is kind of the, the core of what the hero is. Everything dies in one hit. Or if they have AOE, it just kills everything. It really decreases the survivability of any of the the summoning classes, which I absolutely love. Yeah. So even for instance, like some, this is just me just coming up with an idea off the top of my head, having like a limiting factor on how much percentage health each hit can take off of summoned units or something like that. Um, even if it's only in PVE, because I don't know if that would just break PVP, but something to balance them out and give them that viability. Having said that, we do have things like Grizzul doing really well in campaign. Um, you've still got Totem Dude who is semi viable. So it's a, it's an interesting one to try and balance out indeed. But um, any other, any other aspects? Aspects of the new heroes that you wanted to point out in specific that you're looking at um, in the quality of them? Um, I, again, just kind of going back to the synergy, I, I want to see different teams that we can build. It's not, hey, here's the five teams for chapter 36. Pick one of these cookie cutter teams and that's what you're going to run with. I, I want to see a lot more viability out of the, even the Maulers with Life Leech. You know, that needs to be reworked. It's super broken. Um, the light bearers I would like to see really when you look start getting into late game end game there isn't a lot of viability for a lot of different heroes they are just completely left left to the sidelines they're, they're they don't work in a formation yep yeah, hundred percent. Having said that, when we talk about the design of them, I think visually they're doing all right. It's just like you said, the mechanics just to see some more synergies would be fantastic. But your thoughts on visual? Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, from looking at the video they put out with the possible AFK anime, they do absolutely phenomenal. I haven't seen a game yet that, that does it as well as they do at AFK Arena with the visual aspect of it. I think they just need to get a little bit more into the nuts and bolts. And I think they could really rework parts of the Elder Tree um, just to go specifically into different classes to increase the, the viability and the survivability in here, especially when it comes to the tank class. That's one thing that I've really stressed a lot is when you look at the tank class and specifically, um, they don't have the viability in endgame because they don't have the mitigation. When you start getting the level deficiencies, they just get absolutely run over and almost all of them do. Yeah, unless, you might have Arthur that can that can yeah. live, Scrag a little bit, but most of them are just non-existent. They're, they're sort of the the ones that sort of shine are ones with supportive kits on top of their tanks, their, their tank ability. It's not sort of just they're they're tanking. They're, they've got to have that additional support that's fundamental to a team's composition to be able to actually earn a spot. I definitely agree. They get very squishy. So. That leads me into Adi. Now, I, Hippo already touched on it. Um, firstly, Adi, you can say anything you want about the topic we just spoke about, but then I want to talk about the frequency of heroes and get your thoughts on the frequency of releases. All right. Uh, I'll start kind of back on the topics we've been talking about, uh, the quality of heroes. I think the quality has definitely diminished. I don't think it is a bad quality, but I think a lot of heroes, we're going to exclude Walker as he is just outside of any normal character design. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, characters like Peggy, I think they are nice, they are unique, but there's a level of uniqueness that was in different heroes that were released at a different pace. Like Silas was a very unique release. He'd give immunity to other characters. His healing orbs played like a different kind of character. Even like way back when we'd get heroes like Gorvo, who were super new. They'd stun three characters, leap into piles. You'd have to change where enemies were located. Whereas with more recently, we've had Peggy, who just she kind of like just does what other characters do but in a new way raku is similar in that sense where he just plays off of other characters but at the same time he's strong and he's a like a different design uh i'd say the only other two really good recent releases from faction heroes would be raku and dezira those are probably the only two very options we've had everything else has just kind of been copy paste of each other yeah, and what what sort of mechanics, like, do you have any mechanics in mind? Because you do get to a point in a game where there's only so many completely unique mechanics that you can actually 
put through kind of like odin was so crazy when he first came out to me i was like this portaling thing is wicked and then pippa came out i <laughs> i love pippa but it's like it is the same sort of mechanic um but like what, what's any ideas that you have about sort of different mechanics we could throw in um i think of different mechanics we can throw in we don't play a lot with the third dimension like we play a lot with left we don't play a lot with where characters are actually positioned i think the only two characters that play with that besides like there's Skriath, Moriel, Hendrik, and Lucius, who play with where enemies and allies are placed. The yep. rest of them are just kind of whatever. Yep. Oh, and Peggy, because Peggy runs to the fourth spot. Yeah, Besides definitely. that, there's not much with Hero's placement. And another thing I'd love to play with that the game just... they We put very little support into uh, is character movement, like the way characters actually move on the screen. We've yep. got Skriath plus nine, Moriel, and Torn. Those are all the characters we have that play with movement and queen ah uh, yep and queen yeah and and just yeah, I, and are... I, and I know where you're going with that you're going into synergies with things like torn and stuff like that to get to get everything churning if i can find torn on the screen there he is to get things churning around the field so that they get moving and taking effect of his field effect and stuff like that um but yeah, yeah de I, de I definitely agree movement and stuff is definitely it, it's sort of an interesting one too because it is a very powerful effect repositioning as well but I definitely agree. It's a nice one. Um, anything else yeah. on that topic? I don't think so. I think we kind of nailed art team has always fantastic for AFK and Lilith as a whole. There are no complaints whatsoever there. Yeah, definitely. And what do you think about frequency? If frequency has been something that I've been touching on a lot. I think our frequency is too fast, but I don't think it is stiflingly fast yet. Yeah. We've gotten to a point where it's about two to three characters a month fortunately most of them have been factions so at least your spenders can keep up with it for the free to play side it is annoying but at least you can pick and choose characters whereas if you're a high spender you're kind of obligated to get everything yeah i mean Kiaz uh, over here no. going where's the next hero we need him <laughs> we got nothing to build <laughs> yeah yeah but it's ridiculous uh, but i i definitely agree and your thoughts on dimensionals are you happy with the yeah. like sort of oh, like one dimensional ends and new one starts as long as it's not doubles are you cool with that um because for me i know I think they, they are intensive on furniture and signature item if they require them mind you but i i find my thought is on dimensionals it's they're nice characters that free to play can pick up and if they don't require heavy investment it's just like an extra you know an extra tool in your kit that you can play with i think they're nice I, dimensionals as a whole are fantastic to have i don't necessarily like back to back like what we've had now we got prince exchange as merlin is put into the game and you have to start saving for him i personally would like at least a two-week break if not more between them Yep. Merlin and Arthur are kind of exceptions as they'll be available forever, so there's less of a punishment for not fully saving for them right away. Yeah. So I think it's kind of acceptable in this case, whereas it was a lot worse when it was Ein's Albedo straight into another dimensional, or like yeah, three it, dims back to back to no, back. No, that, that was double into double. Wasn't it Ein's, Ein's Albedo into uh, Queen and Joker? Into, yep. I believe so. Yeah, that, that, was, that, that was just unbearable. Yeah. But um, yeah, like I, I don't see it as too hard to save up for if you're just doing um, one into one, but the doubles definitely throw a big spanner in the works um, <laughs> in trying to save. That was, that was intense to say the least. But um, at least they do have like, I mean, it's, it's a little saving grace. To be honest, I feel like the garrison thing was actually a fairly good compromise from like any other game that I've seen has just been like exclusive heroes. They're gone. That's it. So that was a very interesting way to actually go around it. And I'm assuming that eventually, you know, Joker and Queen will come up in here and then eventually maybe Prince. We'll have to wait and see what happens there. But I mean, the core cool one for me is Irons and Elbetto being in there because at least it gives you the opportunity to get them, which are pretty cool units later on. Even Ezio, not too bad as well. The other two, I mean situational i guess flora front front row for ukio um but yeah i definitely think um dimensionals they're going to keep doing them obviously i believe um that's not an inside word that's just my belief because it's good promotion for the game and it's good revenue as well i don't see why a company would stop that but also it's not the end of the world for free to play any thoughts on that hippo um i know they they had talked about with joker and queen i don't think they're coming into the garrison belinda had said that before really um, and it was up on reddit so i don't think they're going to be coming prince of persia possibly could be coming but they they had noted that 
that yeah they they wouldn't be coming to the garrison Damn. i think the garrison is, is an amazing addition just for the simple fact that you can get heroes it to really bring new heroes into the game or new players into the game they still have the option to get you know eins which is the most powerful hero in afk arena right now they still have an option to get them it is a little bit costly which kind of rewards the players that that naturally got him saved for him or purchased him um it doesn't really degrade that with the garrison which i love and albedo i love how she plays off of all of the other dimensionals i like the synergy is really the big thing i want to see in afk arena is how the heroes work together to form a team is what i absolutely love about this game that really drew me in when i started playing yeah, definitely. And, and like he's like, I just get like, and that's sort of something that I just really get excited about with dimensionals. Now <laughs> it's literally just that Alberto. Like, it's like, okay, this is what they are at base, but we can definitely buff them up from there straight with just putting Alberto in. Um, but yeah, I definitely think the, like you said, the garrison was a good feature kind of sucks if that's real and they don't bring queen and joker in because the, the problem with the way it promotes, in my opinion, is like you try and get players in for those characters, but they not, might not see it until, you know, like three weeks into the promotion and then they go, okay, let's do it. But by the time that happens, you can't actually get them. So I, I, I think like obviously it's going to come down to contracts, but I really do hope that eventually they may actually get them in there because um, I always get comments from people saying I came to the game for, you know, like it used to be I always came, I came to the game for irons, but I can't get him. Um, but they remedied that. So hopefully Queen and Joker get some love too. But um, yeah, anything else, either of you two on that topic? Uh, one specific thing that people kind of overlook, I know it's for a very niche section of, of the community, uh, but with them keeping the garrison, it also means that newer whales are incentivized to spend because they don't like feel like they're locked behind a paywall compared to other spenders. Yep. So it's very effective for keeping new revenue going into the game by having such a feature like that and keeping keeping Queen and Joker out may stifle some of that, although probably not to a major extent, just given the way that this game has been marketed. Yep. That that's actually a really good insight. But yeah, definitely. Because you, if you're coming in new into the game and you're like you want to push, like you you want to be able to get what you what you want. And I mean, I guess also on top of that, Irons isn't a bad idea. Like you you can get him as a carry. Like it's a fail safe as well, the way I view Irons in the garrison. It's like a fail safe. If you've had terrible pulls, you haven't pulled any good carry units, but you've pulled fifteen, I don't know, pippers. I don't know why she's on your wish list, but if you've pulled a bunch of something that isn't the main carry that you're looking for, say you've just pulled a heap of Silas and you've got an ascended Silas and then you're like Damon's at Elite Plus, even though he's been on the wish list, like you can just go ahead and get that irons and you've got yourself a carry from that point that you can bind to something. So I think it's actually really beneficial for new players, even the free-to-play ones as well. Anything on that, Hippo? Yeah, yeah, I definitely agree. I like how they've done um, both Arthur and Merlin how you can actually save up for them between the other dimensionals, between the other heroes we've exchanged for is having the option to purchase them, you know, just outside using resources versus, versus um, purchasing them with cash, just having them, you know, in, in the store, in the shop and being able to purchase them when you can, I think is very beneficial for players as well. Definitely, definitely agree. All right, on to the next topic, which is events, uh, just general views on the events um, and the sort of the rotation of them, whether you like how um, involved they are, how much time they require, because we've got like the differing sort of events. We've got the, the some events that come out where literally you do your dailies, you get the goodies. Then we've got Battle of Blood, where you're required to do three daily battles. Now we're going to have Heroes of Asperia, which is an interesting one because you can invest a lot of time or you can just like bide your time and push at the end. So just a general feel about the events that have been coming lately and the way they've been progressing. We'll kick it off with you, Hippo. Um, I love the events. I mean, that's really what I think keeps people in AFK Arena, um, especially when you have a lot of stuff that you cannot pick up where it takes a, a crazy amount of time to get red chests or even get red chests in bulk. This is really the only place that you can get them as a free-to-play player, even a spender, to get those mass quantities of red chests to go ahead and advance the heroes. The, the events are honestly where it's at. There are a lot that take a lot of time, like when you look at the hunting grounds, abyssal expedition, things of those, those nature. You know, you, to, to really maximize the event, it is rewarding because it's the effort that you put into it. You know, running with casuals, we've been number one, number two um, in the Abyssal Expedition, and it takes an 
incredible amount of time that people don't see. Um, you know, from the the weeks of planning, where people are going to be, what sides. Th- there's so much in depth that goes into the game that again, a lot of players don't see. But that is what really makes it worth it in the end when we're in the very top tier, you know, of AFK Arena for a lot of different aspects. Definitely agree. And on that topic of like hunting fields and more specifically Abyssal Expedition, the cool thing about them is even if you don't get like don't get the final reward. It's doesn't. It's not actually incredibly time intensive to get the rest of them if your account's like half progressed. Even the, even in a casual group, if you meet the last two, you know, like you don't actually have to play that hour a day minimum that you know the top guilds are probably requiring their players to do. So I think it's actually balanced out not too bad where you can join casually and get some nice rewards. Like the the reward versus time spent is actually a lot better for people who don't really play it that actively as opposed to the players who try and push the top because when you're pushing the top it's not about the rewards it's about it's about the titles and getting the rank but i feel like it's actually pretty well balanced in that sense where if you're not pushing it incredibly hard you don't get massively penalized for it but you still get some you know nice stuff to go on top whereas people at the pointy end the real pointy end pushing hard they're putting hours and hours and hours into it for not much extra in-game reward, but it's for the flex factor, which is always a, a great competitive thing to have in a game. Any thoughts on that for you, Artie? Um, I think that's something AFK does really well, actually, is balancing their competitive and casual side. Uh, a lot of these events, especially recently, have had leaderboards, even fortune chests being added. However, you can tell that the fortune chest, the rewards are quite small, but it's a nice, it's a payoff for pushing for the leaderboards. It's a way to keep people involved in the events and also a really good way to get better feedback as people invest more time into the event. It's a way to make future events get much better. Uh, another smaller thing that they've been doing with these events that I find both good and bad is that they're changing them minorly. Uh, with Heroes of Asperia, we see just these very small battlefield changes that are happening with depending on what class of hero you use. Uh, stuff like the Battle of Blood, there's, there used to be like a very small change where they added tree into it, whereas it used to be like a smaller tree. And just do you, do stuff you, like that is things that... Do you like that? Is that, a, is that a positive or a negative in your, in your sight? I think it's both. It's positive in the sense that it gets changed and it stops, uh, it stops features from becoming stale. If you get Heroes of Asperia five times and every single time it's the same, the only thing that changes is the meta. Nothing else really changes with it. Like, you don't get any any unique features nothing new in the gameplay it's just oh there's different pvp heroes yeah and uh, you keep going okay i was gonna say whereas at the same time it can be quite a big negative because it it can sometimes be an unnecessary change heroes of asperia usually goes over very well with the community so making a change to something that's already good is like fixing something that's not broken there's no reason to do such a thing how, how do you feel about the the changes with the class bonuses in heroes of asperia in general I'm hesitant to be excited about it because I quite enjoy the state of PvP as a whole. I know that's something coming from someone who has a very high spending account and can afford to play a lot of PvP. Whereas on the smaller end, I can't imagine you're able to play around much with the buffs and debuffs given you're usually stapled into what you have built. Yep. I don't think it'll be a bad thing and I think it'll be a very unique thing. But I don't know if I expect it to be a good thing. What are your thoughts, Sipo? I'm curious on this one now. I, I'm just concerned. I I hope that nothing in there is broken. When when you look at the regular PvP metas, you know that everyone has built that they utilize. Um, if, if any of the class buffs in there are are just absolutely broken and overpowered, it, it's going to change a lot of that. And I think a lot of people could be very disappointed, thinking they're going to progress in you know the event very well, and they don't because of the class specific buffs they they that they were given. Yeah, 100%. And like, see, I always like seeing things that uh, that change it up a little bit. But my the, the biggest concern I have, and I'm still waiting to see how the meta falls in the, on the test server, um, it, just, it just whether it becomes, these things become too powerful and it becomes a rock, paper, scissors of like a full ranger team beats, a full mage team beats, a full warrior team, something like that. I'm just curious on how that will pan out. Um, but we'll have to just wait and see. But the the one thing that I can't knock them for, though, is even if this is a bad change, is the fact that they're not afraid to experiment with what they've got going. 
Um, they sort of did that with we had Battle of Blood. They tried War of Wits. War of Wits was cool, but it was just too dragged out. So they went back to Battle of Blood as the main one they use. Um, but as long as they're happy to experiment and keep trying new things so that we can get some um, variety in the gameplay, I'm kind of cool with it. Yeah, I definitely agree. One thing that I've always loved about this game and coming again from you know, World of Warcraft from Ultima Online from Dark Age of Camelot is when they do something wrong in this game or something doesn't work, they're probably one of the first and only companies I've seen that own up to it as soon as it happens. You know, if it's not working, it's compensation. If it's not working, it's a hot fix. Most games and all of the mobile games that I've played, I, I haven't seen one yet that does that, that actually owns up to the mistakes and, and what they did wrong or what didn't work and just change it on the fly. Yeah, I, I agree with that. And I think I think having a public test server, which is like actually a certain region server, is fantastic for that. The the one that comes to mind was when they put when they put that Brutus skin in the game and it had stats and it was like it was instant uproar. And within within the time period between it being on the test server and coming to live, they'd removed it, they'd fixed it, and it was all good. So I definitely agree with that sentiment. Anything to add, Artie? I think the fact that we have a test server, at least to get early information, is quite nice. Uh, there's a lot of people who like plan ahead, and being able to see what's coming is extremely nice for them. Like We even know that's how we get Heroes of Asperia coming. There's uh, It helps out with guides and such, uh, with some of the stuff like that guy Wind, all the stuff he posts out on Reddit. Yep. 100%. Uh, I think the fact that we have a test server and there are players who are dedicated to the test server specifically to help out players on the main server is very nice. It's something a lot of games don't have. Some stuff with like some events have had very not acceptable uh, initial costs or some of the rewards have been either too high or too small that they've fixed. I can remember very distinctly there was some changes on the uh, Abyssal Expedition in one of the first or second that were found in the test server and then changed on the main before it went live. Remember there's some old Mahiro bugs that they had fixed up? Yep, 100%. Yeah, it's not too bad. I, th I definitely think the uh, the test server is definitely a positive for it. Um, but, and then like we focused a bit on like um, Abyssal and stuff like that. But then do you guys just enjoy those passive events where it's just like, you know, do your dailies, get some stuff, pick up some more red chests. I think those like those ones are good and I feel like they rotate it fairly well between time intensive and, you know, basically just free stuff in the events. You guys agree or? Yeah, absolutely. Again, it, it goes back to the, the accumulation of goods. I mean, if you're logging into the game 30 days in a row and every 30 days you're just doing dailies, dailies, weeklies, weeklies, they, they have to change it up a little bit with some of those events, even if it is just an accumulation of doing the dailies and things of that nature. I think it really keeps people interested and engaged with the game. Yeah, and like you said earlier, getting those red chests, like I always get super pumped when I see like, just one of those login events and I'm like, sweet, I don't have to change anything, but I'm going to get a good stack of red chests and that gets me well on my way to building my next character. I think it's it's just a really good way to balance it out. And then I also get really excited when I see Bob or Heroes of Spirit or anything like that because then you get to play around and have some fun with some different features in the game. Um, anything else on events before we go into the next topic? I don't think so. I wholeheartedly agree. I think the pace of events has been quite nice. We haven't been overwhelmed and we haven't been left out of events we got a good mix of time intensive and not at all time needed. Yeah, beautiful. You hippo? Yeah, I definitely agree. Yep. yep. I, I definitely love the Misty Valley on that that on repeat. Oh, yes. Just all of the rewards, the the elite stones you get in there, the chess, your choice hero, everything in there is is just awesome. I, I love having that one on repeat. And, and and that's a great one because Misty Valley, and that's just free stuff along with, you know, Voyage of Wonders, all that sort of stuff. There's so much free stuff in the game now for very little investment. I mean, really Misty Valley, you just throw, you just Mercenary and Irons or a Lucretia and you just basically clear the whole thing. There might be a couple you miss out on, but hey, 900 po poke coins isn't going to make or break your game and you can get some sick rewards. That is a very valid point. All right, jumping on to the next one is future content. What would you guys like to see as the game develops? What kind of content? Basically anything, whatever your heart desires. Artie, we'll start with you. All righty. I think my number one thing I want to see is better player or better connection between the developers and the players of the game. Like right now what we have is we have the developers who like they take part of the feedback 
And then there's also like another half of feedback for a lot of things that kind of gets a there's a lot of things in the game that are quite often repeated offenses from the developers of negative things. Uh, a very good example of that uh, is players who are constantly pushing just past where the nerfs occur, or players who are pushing right in the middle of the nerfs. Uh, there's stuff like the Chasmic Altar where it's continually nerfing stuff, but then there's another, a lot of other points where Chasmic at high chapters is nerfing almost nothing. So players are being rewarded for not pushing, which seems very inverse to the way that you should be wanting to play the game. Uh, yep. And then there's other stuff like we have a very high hero release, release and instead of Lilith talking to us about it, they're just kind of to release and spoil more heroes. And yep. there's, there's hero hype. Players want to be excited for heroes, but you can't be perpetually hyped for heroes. There, there's a limit to how much you can try and fuel up the community for new releases. I think they're kind of going past. Yeah, because like at the moment it's every it's every two weeks. Like they do a, they do a patch. I think I think tonight we're gonna get patch notes. We should I think at the time of recording this we should get patch notes tonight. The drop on the test server uh, tomorrow night, and then get access to the trials and stuff like that the morning after. So um, I think is, that's that's what you guys have been seeing every second week so far. Yep, that's about right. Yeah. Yeah, so definitely agree there, and yeah, I think, and I think the all also the other thing is, obviously, foreign like they they have like community managers and stuff like that, but I think there is also that process to go through for getting the communication all the way up. So there's definitely that extra hurdle um, in translations and stuff like that. But I definitely agree if they just more communication and more just like we said, they do communicate pretty well early with the test server but just more discussions with the community like for instance for me the first one of those dolly's corner posts that they do on twitter i don't know they probably do it on facebook and stuff like that as well but um the first one of those had like developer feedback like i think it was like four questions um and then since then they haven't had that anymore so i would like that would be like the first thing for me uh i'd love to see you know getting that is it weekly i think it's just it's weekly or bi-weekly we get the dolly's corner and i'd love to see just some developer feedback of some key questions in that sort of thing would that would that be the kind of thing you'd like be a start on the direction you're looking at absolutely just, it, even small things just small steps make for one giant yeah, because like after the first Dolly's Corner, I was like so hyped when I saw the next one up. But then I was like, oh, there's no feedback. I was hoping for the feedback. And then like the two after that, we still haven't had any. So I'd love it if they could get back to that that sort of routine as well. Anything anything else you're keen on, Artie? Um, I don't think there's anything major that I'd like to see uh, besides a slowing of hero releases into better quality. I think their mix of quality and quantity is not where it should be for a game. Uh, I'd, ideally, I'd like to see a slightly slower or a more spaced out Celestial Hypogean release schedule. Uh, as of the past few ones, they've been like a month or two right next to each other, and then like a four or five month gap. Ideally, I'd like to see once every three months, two and a half months, just something to where it's consistent and able to be both spent on and free to play built compared to what it's been. People will like whale the new one and then the next one is even more broken so then players feel bad for investing into the first one yeah i think that's where we've been kind of lucky in the last two where they haven't been completely game breaking um like moriel's like you know she's situationally decent but she's not like completely game breaking um and then we have uh what's his name leofric who's actually not too bad at elite and for free to play if you pull one copy it's actually not a bad pull but you don't really need to rush out and build him so who knows maybe we'll get another one that's going to be like the new meta thing because i've been i've been sort of waiting to see what the next big celestial hypergene will be um your thoughts on those on those two characters specifically i think you got it right on the nail moriel is cool she's unique but she's strong whereas leofric is strong in a extremely potent niche but if you can't fill that niche he feels like one of the worst characters in the game yeah, but he's but Mario requires high investment to do her thing, whereas Leo Frick can do one copy, and the only thing he's missing is some damage amp on his furniture signature item. All right, so for those that didn't realize, the camera was frozen that whole time. I'm back. <laughs> We're live, and Hippo, it's your turn. Um, what would you like to see in the game? Uh, the big thing that I've still been pushing for is the remove all gear button. 
Um, with, with the amount of content, with the amount of teams, all of the faction towers, the Abyssal Expedition, especially with the martial ratings that they have, making sure that you have your faction heroes equipped with the proper gear. I, I really feel like I have to search when I'm going through different aspects when it comes to the Misty Valley. Again, have to change your gear through different heroes. And especially if you're a newer player that don't have doesn't have so many gear sets, it's super frustrating to go through the gear again and again and again and again. I 100% agree with that sentiment. I like on some of my alt accounts, I just won't do the faction towers on the day because I can't be bothered with sw swapping gear across multiple accounts. I just, it just, it's one of those things that just tilts me and I'm like, nope, ain't doing it. <laughs> we'll just skip it. Um, that's, that was something I asked, I asked for like a while ago was to have instead of 10 floors per day on the faction towers, whether we could just get 30 floors per week on all of them. So one day you could choose and you could push that tower just to ease that gear swapping. But if we could just have a remove all button, and then you could just go into the characters you want and go apply, 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 do that push, remove all, and then do it again. Like the, like we got, we got the auto equip, give us the auto remove, just, just a little button out here somewhere, you know, just, just, just down the bottom corner here or here, just, just, just somewhere where we could just remove it. I definitely agree with that. Um, I, I hadn't thought about that before this video, but holy crap, you just, hit the nail on the head <laughs> that really resonates with me uh anything else you want to see um i i think there's some of the things that we don't really utilize like the trading hub you know they, they hyped up the trading hub with the abyssal expedition when it came out nobody uses it especially if you're not super active within the abyssal expedition they they need to lower the cost of some of the items i know the the rickety cart i don't even know the last time i've ever used the rickety cart i know it has some functionality but not for very many people I think there's some aspects that they could just kind of rework or add more functionality to it to really make players, I guess, just kind of engage with it more or actually utilize it more. Yeah, yeah, I agree. But on, on the sentiment of like the Ricky card, I think that's, I think it's more there for mistakes <laughs> is, is the idea. So you're using it early game when you, you've leveled the wrong thing or when you've made the wrong thing legendary plus twice or obviously end game when you make a whale territory and you're resetting those celestial hypergenes for another one um, but i definitely agree the trading hub was an interesting one that one got i think I, I i don't know i think they might be a bit hurt from it when they, when they hyped it up and dropped it and then everyone's like that's just a whale feature get it out of here so i think they're slowly entering back into that territory as well um but any any other features for either of you um i I love what they're doing. I think they need to add more to like the wondrous uh, pouch and things of that nature, but I'm sure it's coming. Yeah. I, I think, I think there was a bit of bad feedback around the candy crush in there. Um, and it's, I, I, cause they did a post about it. They did. They, I think it might've been on that first Dolly's corner where they talked about, you know, people were upset about it and they had other things planned or something like that. I can't remember exactly, but I think they got a bit put off by um, the response from players. For me, it's like, well, just, just hit your mum or your sister or your brother up who's good at Candy Crush and let them do it and then you can get the free goodies. Like, <laughs> I'm pretty cool with anything that gives me freebies. But um, but yeah, I, I, I yeah, definitely I hope there's something that. coming there, but uh, I don't know what they will put in but um for me there's one other thing that i want to see wow. and i've been hanging out for it for probably two years now um because they tested it twice or three times and they put it i think it was in a community post about i want to say like a year ago they said they were working on it don't quote me i don't want to be quoted on that because <laughs> it's dangerous but um guild battles would you guys like to see guild battles or not what's your vibes on that Absolutely. I think, Absolutely. Sorry. Go ahead, Apple. No, I, I was just thinking with, with guild battles, I think I it's going to be, it would be nice to see, but I think you're going to have 90 to, you know, 80 to 90% okay. of the players that don't even compete because they have no guild or their guilds and active things of that nature. I, I think there's going to be a select group that will love it and it will be absolutely successful. But depending if the masses are going to get involved with it or how they're going to. Yep. And and you, Adi? I think it's great to encourage the player base that already is very invested into the game. It may be somewhat punishing for players who are not very invested or are very new and can't find a good guild. 
But at the same time, if they have a good matchmaking system, I think a lot of that could be kind of blown over. Although at the same time, given the state of other games, I don't know how much you can expect. Yeah. So like for me personally, like I started mobile gaming playing Summoner's War. I don't know if you guys know it, but they had like a really involved guild battle system and it sort of got everyone involved in guilds. And it was like, it was just like the thing you looked for. They they actually had guild battles that reset twice a day. So every 12 hours you'd be starting a fresh guild battle. And it was just like, it was the funnest part of the game for me. So it was just something that from my original mobile gaming for three years over in that game, um, it was just something that I've always loved. So every game I jump into, it's sort of that feature that I personally have a bias towards enjoying. Um, and I think it would become a balance of what kind of rewards do you give so that it doesn't feel too penalizing for those people that don't want to play in a guild, but so it's still entertaining for those that do. But I definitely agree with Hippo that it could be a bit hard to balance. Um, but I just think it would make people who... I, 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 like, I think one, it would make guilds closer like obviously we have the um the abyssal expedition and stuff which is great for that um but i feel like it would add that extra bit of competition that i think is always just healthy in a game but um any other any other mentions on that or any other things you guys want to talk about before we finish up i, I was just thinking on that point if we did something kind of like what they did with the hunting ground where if you have a guild of 10 active people you could be grouped together with other guilds of 10 active people you know, and whether they want 20, 30, 40, whatever it is for the guild battle, not a full 70 on 70. I think that's a little excessive, but yeah, you definitely. could compete just kind of in different tiers. I think it would be, it would be a pretty cool event to see. Yeah, hundred percent. That's actually a really good idea. And you, Adi? Uh, I think kind of going off what Hippo said, actually, I think there was one very large game that actually did that or something very similar to that when they added Clan Wars. I think Clash of Clans did that you could limit the amount of people going into a clan war and they could do something similar to afk uh, yeah. another thing with the guild topic actually is we could add non-pvp gu other guild things could do more guild hunts there could do be like an actual guild event thing things that can bring a guild closer together and make people more involved with guilds without having to fight other guilds and adding like clashing between them. i wanted to see the guild bosses a lot of games have guild bosses that are cumulative damage between the entire guild for rewards. This one hasn't had done anything with the bosses at all, ever. Yeah, I, I, I like that idea that now that you say that, like like some sort of massive behemoth boss that like takes up the whole screen and then you've got your like five little dudes running in there. Like they could even change up the number, number of characters you bring into it. Like you could have something like that. Interesting. Um, but yeah, I, I definitely like that that idea of like the big boss that you're all working together to try and... Um, get down like we do have the siren and riz but it's sort of like infinite health pools that you can eventually get through but it's like you know it's it's an individual thing it doesn't feel like you're working towards that same goal but i i like that idea the only other thing i could think of would be uh something to do with like the hero boxes and fodder heroes i think there's a once you get into the super late parts of the game uh with all your characters having stars and whatnot especially if you scroll down look at all of those fodders <laughs> you get the copies of all the ascended characters. You get them of the fodder. And uh, it just uh, takes up your hero space. If you look, you've got over 800 slots right now filled. Yeah, I know I know. Kiasma's a big one for that. <laughs> He's been letting me know. He's yeah. huge on that. E even on his account, dude, if they had an auto legendary plus ascend, <laughs> like that, that would help out. Because <laughs> check it. It's ridiculous. Just never stops. No, there, it yeah. is. there we go. Found and the they end. fixed... Yeah. They fixed it with someone like the Celestial and Hypogeans because they used to take up a lot of space. But yep. they could definitely do something even just small with them. Let us exchange it for dust or XP or something. Like just some use for after your characters are just fodder. Yeah, definitely. And But it, having said that, it does take a long time to get to that point um, where like, you know, you could... You can still use Ascended Tier Heroes as fodder for other Ascended Tier Heroes and stuff like that. But once you get to this point, especially where Kiasma's at, like they just... They just waste of space almost they, they just literally there's nothing you can do but i definitely agree for for the mega whales and stuff like that being able to exchange them for dust and experience that gives you the leveling advantage as well and lets you keep progressing like that um however i think kiasma yeah we're at max crystal here so <laughs> you know maybe uh, it becomes a it becomes a weird point that i don't even want to try and comprehend in my brain because it's like what do you give someone that has everything <laughs> 
a new hero that doesn't work. <laughs> you, you give them, <laughs> you give them a walker. That's perfect. Well, I think I think that pretty much leads us into the finish quite well there. That was a good call. But um, any final words from you guys? Um, obviously, give yourselves a shout out. Um, Ferry Hippo on YouTube, Artie on Reddit. I will leave them linked again. But we'll kick it off with you, Hippo. I just love the game. I'm in the gaming community. It's been absolutely amazing. Started watching your videos, Vulcan, when I started. Um, got me into the game, and I, it's been two years later now. It's awesome. It's awesome. And you, and you, Artie? Um, I'd say the same thing. I'm very happy with the state of the game, and I think the game is in a healthy spot. It could be healthier, but a lot of our complaining is outside of a lot of the negatives and positives of the game. Uh thank you for having me and hippo on this has been a wonderful discussion and i think quite insightful for a lot of other people definitely and thank and thank you guys for coming on i really do appreciate it because like i said to you guys before we started recording one person talking about stuff is just pointless so i wanted to get some other opinions and i think that's the definite thing for me as well is like i'm quite happy with the state of the game we are definitely nitpicking in some of the areas that we're looking at um but definitely there's always room to improve so we always push for that but once again thank you guys very much for coming onto the channel guys make sure you check out those links in the description drop hippo a sub i don't know what you do on reddit but support Artie over on reddit <laughs> <laughs> it's something different but you know click i think there's a follow thing i suck at reddit anyway i just like laughing at some comments over there anyway thanks for watching guys i hope you have an awesome day and we'll look forward to seeing the next one cheers